In a world filled with uncertainty, our safety is not something we can ever take for granted. I'm William Shatner. Tonight on Rescue 911, true stories of courageous acts of love. We begin on the morning of April 14, 1992 in Callaway County, Kentucky. Herbert Frederick said goodbye to his wife Paula and headed to class at a nearby university where in less than three weeks he would be graduating. Herb was working full-time the night shift and um, going to classes during the day. Then he woke up late, so he hurried out the door. Steve Ernstberg was driving his pickup truck toward Herb on Highway 94. I wasn't going real fast because the morning before I'd lost a load of shingles out of the back of the truck, so I was taking my time that morning. I looked up and I saw the car coming at me on my side of the road. They were tangled in that tree. It was dangerous. You could get away. When Herbert Frederick's car went out of control, knocking over a power pole and slamming into a tree, Steve Ernstberger and some other passing motorists stopped to see what they could do to help. There was a young lady trying to find a phone to call the ambulance. And then it dawned on me that, well, I could have been killed, too. Ted Potts heard the crash and ran to see if he could help. I walked up there, and there was a man leaning over a wheel. I saw power lines down. They were tangled in that tree, and it was sagging on both sides of the car. I said, that old boy doesn't have a chance. That's what I, that's what I thought. I said, well, Ted, you need to call electric company, too, because he's broke the pole. And uh, it was probably danger of electrical right? shock. Right? I, I didn't know if he was alive, to tell you the truth. Right. It was dangerous. You could get electrocuted. That's why nobody would touch the car. So I figured he was dead anyway. Within minutes, a Murray Calloway County Hospital ambulance arrived, including paramedic Owen Moore and his partner, EMT Kenny Collins. When we pulled to the scene, we seen the power lines that were hanging over the car and going across the road. They were hanging approximately maybe three to four foot over the car, and every time the power lines would surge, you could just see it burning the limbs and dropping each time. I approached the car. I mean, I, I'm concentrating on the patient, but trying to take care of myself, too. I see quite a bit of blood. He's had a head injury of some sort. The potential for this patient to die was, was very high. The Murray Fire Department arrived soon after, led by firefighter EMT Brad Hall. We got out of the truck, and I kind of walked up, you know, kind of rapidly, and, you know, what do you have here, you know? We kind of got to looking. Then about that time, my partner, Tim Bradshaw, tapped me on the shoulder. And he said, hey, we've got a trailer over here on fire. And I thought, oh, great. Tim, take these guys from the volunteers and go put out the fire. I said, for God's sake, be careful, because the power lines are still hot. I mean, if you can't comfortably go in there and put it out, leave it. We kind of just looked at each other and was like, you don't run into a scene where there's power lines involved. You just do not do it, never. And I was thinking to myself, well, this tree will hold these power lines up long enough. We could just run down in real quick, get in real quick, and get out real quick. And uh, I know Owen looked at me and he says, uh, well, we can't let him die. Stay down, buddy. Don't try to get out. Stay down. I want to make sure there's nothing down on the car before I approach it. 
Stay still, hold on. With head injuries or other injuries, even though they're unconscious, they will be combat, okay, they'll be Stay moving still, around. Horse. Hold on, we'll get you out here. Watch them lines up our heads. Mm -hmm. Where's the collar? Come on, right here. Right here. Get okay. it As time goes on, the fire in the tree will limb, you know, holding the power lines up, and it's burning through them. It's like, if we're going to do it, we're going to do it now because we don't have time to sit around and ponder the situation very long. Lose a lot of blood on his leg. I went to get some equipment out of our crash kit, and that's when I realized the car was on fire. Forget these lines over the car. This car's on fire. Let's go. Package him up. Let's get him out of here. It could explode any time. I knew then that there could be four lives taken. Got to get him out of here. Package him up. On. Let's go. Come on. Get these legs here. His right leg was uh, mangled up pretty good. It was broken. And of course, we don't worry about splinting. In that case, it's like, let's save the guy's life. He may walk with a limp, but at least he'll be able to walk, you know. Let's go. Get him out. Get the leg there. I get this. I got him. Let's go. We did it the best way we could. We knew that if we moved him wrong, we knew we could paralyze him or maybe kill him. Stay on the side of him. Let's go. Hold his head still. Hold his head still. Hold. Stay down, sir. As soon as we got the victim to the ambulance, the power lines were down on the car and the car was totally engulfed. Got him? Got it. Let's go down. Going down. I felt better about what we'd done. I felt like we made a difference because he most definitely would have burned up had we not got him out. I was tired. I was emotionally upset, you know, because it was not a comfortable scene. At the time when we were doing it, it was like, let's try it, we'll pull it off. And then after it's over with, you say, you know, you were lucky. Paula Frederick came to see her husband at the hospital as soon as she was notified of the accident. I told him that I loved him. Man, that he was going to be okay no matter what it looked like. I just couldn't believe that he had the accident two and a half weeks before graduation because he had worked so hard all these years to get it and he, he um, had the wreck. 38-year-old Herb Frederick was transferred to Lourdes Hospital 50 miles away with severe head trauma. He was examined by neurologist John Colby. Hold his arms. He got out of these both arms. He, he had a laceration over his eye. He had a contusion. That's from the brain smacking back and forth inside the skull. He had blood uh, pushing on his brain on the left side. Herb. Reconstructive surgery was performed on Herb's shattered right leg. His wife, Paula, tried to cope with the uncertainty of his future. Herb would do anything for you. He just loved life, and he, um, he was working full-time and taking classes. And with a family, he still had it, you know, and he, he's so brilliant. And I don't want it to be lost. Although Herb lost the sight in one eye, three weeks after the accident, he had recovered enough to be transferred to the rehabilitation center. Herb's made an amazing recovery. This is a lucky guy. He's coming back uh, further than I think anybody thought he would. Had they waited until everything was just right to take him out, Herb might not be around right now. Look over towards me. Look at my finger. I'll follow it. When I was in the hospital, they said, you're going home. What are you going to do? I said, let's see. I guess I'll have to wash clothes and wash dishes. And then, believe it or not, I have been doing that, and she really appreciates it. It was months before Herb could return to work. After his accident, I just wanted to follow people and say, life's too short. You don't need to get there so fast, you know, or why are you in such a hurry to, you know, come look at my husband, see what happened to him. One year later, he's finally getting his calling. Mm -hmm.